Hey guys, this is Mark Lewis. I'm here at my studio in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm gonna take you through how I mix with my expansion pack for the new STL Tones Control Hub plugin. Okay, so what I wanna do here is show you guys exactly what I've done with Control Hub using a few different signal chains. I took a couple pretty complex signal chains um, just to kind of show you how useful and powerful Control Hub is. We're gonna check out a song off the new Fallujah record coming out. The song will have dropped April 27th. It's called Radiant, and you'll be able to check it out uh, anytime if you wanna hear the mix. All right, so basically let's, let's go in and let's hear the whole mix and everything, well, let's see, the Tom, the toms, the overheads, the bass, the uh, natural snare top, the guitars, and the vocal chains are nearly all Control Hub. I believe on the vocal bus, I have some non-Control Hub plugins on the bus itself, but on the main track, I have nothing but Control Hub there. Um, so pretty critical points. I mean, I consider the bass, toms, the vocals, you know, the overheads, very, very critical. Let's check this out. All right, that gives you a good clip of the song. And it's a pretty complex mix. Um, and I also wanted to play just so you guys can hear this part of the song over here. So we go from Two, two big extremes to the next, and you know, Control Hub handles all that super well. Maybe we'll take a look at the bass, just so you guys can understand uh, the tone. I was actually able to completely recreate the signal chain using only Control Hub. Uh, normally I have quite a bit of EQ and compression going on for the DI and then a distorted tone. As you can see over here, there's a lot of stuff going on. I just kind of froze that so you could see what was there. And then here we have only control hub. So let's let's check out the bass tone soloed. And this is purely STL. <laughs> Let's go ahead and kill that dirt track so we can hear the, the low end. One of, one of the cool things I did here was we modeled my uh, 1176 that I have here on the rack I had custom built for me years ago. It's a, a Rev F 1176 clone with a uh, different output transformer, a Hoff output transformer. It sounds really, really cool. I've used it on every vocal uh, that I've tracked for probably a decade now. And I do also compress bass with it sometimes. So what I did was I took my model of the 1176 and stuck that on the base to kind of replicate the compression I had on the DI. I think it sounds fantastic. Um, just to kind of control the peaks a little bit, I'll turn that off. It's just your bare, uncompressed bass. You hear me turn that on and you can actually hear the Hear the low end come up a little bit and get a little bit of color in there. And that's exactly what that compressor sounds like. It nailed the, it nailed that signal chain incredibly for me. I mean, it just sounds amazing. It's exactly where I want it in the mix. All that punchiness that I was, you know, afraid I would lose. I said, that, you know, I didn't think there was any way that there would be a limiter as good as what I prefer. And it's just as good, if not better. 
Yeah, I mean, to, to me, it's it's incredible because I mean that that's really, you know, uh, it's my typical approach to bass. Obviously, it's gonna it's gonna um, vary a little bit depending on the bass, you know, um, and the performance and the source material. I mean, that, that that's a a finger style bass thing. I might vary a little bit with a pick or something, but it's all things I can do within here. I may I may adjust the low end or I may you know, use a different, uh, low end roll off or whatever it is. And it's all able to be done in here. And honestly, like if I'm tracking or something, I mean, I could pull this up and have a fantastic DI bass sound in one click and, you know, no more latency than I would if I had actually less latency than I would if I had, you know, five plugins going to monitor with, um, so that's really, really incredible. All right, let's solo up the drums here and it's always fun, especially with a performance like this, um, to hear these soloed up. Let's check these out. One of my other really sometimes complex signal chains can be my Tom bus. That's a roomier clip. Here's a drier clip. Let's find a spot where we can hear all the toms really well. I want you guys to note, obviously, that there's no samples on these. I mean, you can hear the, hear the cymbals coming in and out, the gates working. Um, These are really well-tuned toms. So I have a very exaggerated tom sound on this. It kind of gets it to cut through, and I really like this exaggerated sustain on the floor tom. We purposely tune them like that on this record. I, I tracked this as well. Um, so it's something that I really wanted to exaggerate. I thought it was a beautiful sounding drum. Um, so I tend to create tom chains that really ex exaggerate that. Um, so. I have a, a couple different things I use to really just kind of make them sound larger than life. I do a lot of EQing, um, but you know, I mean, you're seeing like, here's typical Tom scooping, things like that. All this stuff will be, you know, in control hub. But the thing is that I have is I have a couple, you know, a little bit of distortion going, maybe a little bit of uh, sub enhancement and then some more EQ on the bus. And then I was able to just kind of capture that all. And this plugin recreated it beautifully. It's, it's actually just mind blowing. So here is the, my Tom chain. And then here's the STL one. Really incredible, like nailed it. Gets all that cool sub, gives me that smack that I'm looking for from the compression and gives me that little bit of distortion that I use on, on this particular sound and it's all right there. Without it, this is what you have. Great sounding toms, but they're not gigantic anymore. Let me turn it back on. Really, really incredible stuff. Crazy that it can do that because there is a piece of hardware in there that uh, does some things that nothing else does and this thing did it exactly. Check out the overheads too. These are really, really cool sounding overheads. We use some really heavy cymbals that were hit really hard. All right, so I also wanted to go over my overhead signal chain. It can be pretty complex. I used a touch of tape simulation on this one, which I don't normally do because I wanted to smooth things out a little bit. And then really the rest is just EQ and some parallel compression. Um, let's check out how my, my single chain sounds.
We'll do something I haven't done is what we'll we'll bypass my whole signal chain so you can hear it. Pretty good sounding sources as it is. And then we'll reinstate it. This is my signal chain. My goal was just to add a little bit of control of the dynamics and some top end shimmer and uh, a little bit of sustain on the cymbals using the, using the parallel. Um, and here's the STL version. Sounds friggin' awesome. Sounds amazing to me. Um, I love how the how the plugin captured what I did great. And uh, one of the things I'd I'd like to show off too is the is how just great this plugin sounds if I was going to tweak more. Able to mock the, um, or copy the, the parallel using the, the wet dry knob on this uh, compressor. That's the fully compressed symbols. I just kind of blend them right in there, about 50% on this one. Kind of brings everything up, the details up a little bit and gives me a little more sustain, but not too much. Um, the other thing I, I'd like to show off is how, how good this EQ sounds. We'll play it and I'll do some EQing so you guys can hear. mix here. Let's, let's take a look at, at, at my uh, vocal signal chain here. Um, this song in particular I, I thought would be cool because uh, I was able to show you a couple different types of really extreme vocals. Um, this It's all the same vocalist, but this guy has a very uh, chesty and uh, very, I wouldn't say congested, but very full low mid in his low sound. It's very, very prominent in the 250 to like five or 600 range because he uses the proximity effect to sound big on the mic and the highs are much more neutral so i actually have two different eq uh chains going on that i switch between in the mix i'll show you the lows first check this out Cool. Sounds awesome. Sounds how I want it in the mix. Let's hear this vocal soloed up without control hub on it. Go Vildos! Go Vildos! Go Vildos! You can hear it's kind of bloaty. Go Vildos! Not much sparkle to it. Go Vildos! Go Vildos! You can hear how dramatic the difference is with, with control hub, and that was a you know, two compressors, distortion, uh, two different EQs, all replicated in one plugin and done 
pretty much exactly. Okay, let's check out the high one as well. This one's a little bit more subtle. That's raw. Here it is with the with the plug-in chain recreated in the control hub. Sounds really great. Let's bypass the vocal chain just to see what it sounds like in the mix without it. Just not sitting there. It's, with it on, it's right in the pocket. Really cool. All right, let's talk more about the guitars on this. Everything you've heard so far has been uh, the control hub on the guitar bus. Um, I use a couple different EQs and maybe sometimes a touch of uh, multiband compression. Um, but this one is really just some pretty simple EQ. I recorded these guitars really how I wanted them. And uh, this EQ, these EQs are pretty critical to how I work. I can't just use just any EQ on distorted guitars. Um, I really find, especially in the high end and the low lows, that I'm looking for very specific sounds. And uh, that's why I use, I can't just use any EQ. So I have a couple that I use and uh, Control Hub recreated that perfectly. We'll check it out right now. So I'll warm up for you. All right, so that, that was a control hub. Let's check out how my original signal chain sounded. Pretty incredible. Here it is turned off. Pretty good guitar sound, but just a, a little too big in the highs and lows and just not a lot of, not the detail that I want. So we'll turn the EQ on. Pretty epic. Um, I can tell you right now that I couldn't recreate this signal chain with any any plugin. Like I couldn't just load up, uh, you know, FabFilter or the Digi EQ7 or anything like that, and just EQ it to sound like this because the curves are different. You know, the way it reacts to to certain amplitudes are different, and this thing just nailed it. It's really incredible sounding, and I can I really enjoy the way the EQ sounds when I am tweaking. I showed you that on on the uh, cymbals, but here too. Let's say I want a little bit more mid range out of it. We'll do the higher 1K just to get a little bit more in your faceness. <laughs> Great, great sounding EQ. Um, I always, one of the first things I check out is how the low end sounds. Amazing, amazing sounding EQ. Um, I don't know how they created these or maybe they're modeled after something else or whatever, but super punchy exactly where i want it really really cool okay let's talk a little bit about the master bus stuff too i did a couple different things i, I modeled my personal ssl bus compressor which was built for me around the same time as the 1176 was and this one um back in the, I guess you could say the old days, uh, Jason Sukoff and I, when we were still working together full time, uh, we were mixing on an SSL 4056E. Uh, and that had the original SSL bus compressor in there with the original DBX 
uh, gold VCAs, which is something I've always loved the sound of. And when we sold that console, there's a lot of things I missed, but that compressor was probably the most thing I missed the most. And I had that specifically built for me. And everybody's like, ah, everybody has an SSL clone and blah, blah, blah. Well, I specifically, not that it's hard to find, but tracked down the DBX gold VCAs and uh, really made sure that this compressor sounded like that. And um, I am not a crazy bus compression guy um, most of the time, especially on a mix like this. But this one, I have a, just a touch going. We'll check out how it sounds. I just bypass it and we'll go ahead and, and do a bypass and then I'll click it in so you can hear the difference. Fantastic sounding, pretty much nails the sound of, of my bus compressor. Really reacts well. Um, and this one also has a, a little bit of EQ on it as well. Um, I normally have maybe just a touch of maybe 12K, maybe a touch of, of 80. And this one models that signal chain perfectly. I just... Can't say enough about it. It's another one of my favorite uh, bus compressor presets. It's it's my bus compressor with another piece of hardware I use uh, and just a touch of EQ. It's subtle stuff, but on on material like this, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for subtle. Uh, I don't want to wow people with, with color and things like that, because to me, especially with program material like this, where it's so complex and so fast, and then you have the middle part of the song where it's really open and dynamic. I really don't want to, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of, kind of lose my ass to color. Um, and it's critical because if I start to get too colored, then I start to rely on it too much in certain certain things and then when somebody may want to make a change it may not react as well as, as if i had full control over the bus i hope that makes sense for everybody um that's why i keep this stuff subtle and why i think it's so important to have these subtle uh presets like this um because if you're relying too much on tape compression or transformer saturation or things like that in a mix like this um you really will lose your ability to control the mix later on. Um, that's why I really believe in pro, uh, presets like this, if that makes sense. All right, so what I did was I created a, a group here so I could uh, bypass uh, the Control Hub plugins that I've used on, on the buses that I've demonstrated today, just so you can kind of hear what a difference they make in the mix. Um, I figured I'd loop a couple parts so you could hear, you know, we'll listen to a Tom part, or a part with toms and then a part with vocals. Uh, check this out. We'll do it with, with the control hub on and then with it off. Pretty dramatic. Um, Let's loop a vocal part. Pretty amazing. I'd also like to note that, uh, the reverb I've been using on the vocals has been purely the the reverb and a delay. Go for those. 
Awesome sounding reverbs on this. Um, there will be presets of the delays and reverbs that I use for my main vocals in here. Um, and I'll definitely be using them in my mixes. I mean, it's just so easy. I have basically an entire channel strip with effects included, which is a big deal because a lot of times I'm um, EQing and compressing my reverb and delay sends um, for certain things, you know, certain effects or just to sit in the mix well. And this has it all. And these reverbs and delays sound as good as my favorite ones. Um, I really, really love the the plate reverb in here uh, from what sounds like a Lexicon 480 to me. Um, very similar to the one I use consistently and um, just really, really great sounding. And then you have all this different coloration and things like that you can use in here. Um, can't say enough about that. Really, really cool stuff. Okay, one of the things I wanted to show you guys that's incredibly impressive about this plugin is the mastering capabilities. I wouldn't call my mastering chain complex, but there's a, a couple things I uh, use very specifically because of how good they sound and how transparent they are. I did not believe STL when they told me they could recreate that, um, but they did. And I, I have a meter up here just so you guys can see. Basically, when I send mixes out, I will have them up pretty loud, nearly mastering level. Um, I don't mix that way, but I will send them through a limiter before the before the artist gets them so they can understand how it will sound mastered. And uh, let's say the mixes sit about anywhere between minus seven and minus six, which is pretty screaming loud, but that's what bands expect and what labels expect from us mixers. And um, it's critical to be able to get your, your mix to that level. So let me show you the mix with my typical mastering limiter on it, I'm gonna play right now. This is without Control Hub. You can see we're sitting about minus six, minus 6.6, 6, you know, in the mid sixes, which is very, very loud. Now let's go ahead and switch to the Control Hub preset here. This one is one that I made uh, that has very basic EQ and uh, really just is there for, you know, pretty simple mastering, but it's not so simple to get something really loud and have it be transparent. So here we are. I don't know if you guys noticed while I was playing that, I was adjusting the threshold of the limiter, which took us up about almost a half a dB louder than where I had the mix previously with my uh, favorite limiter that I like to use for this purpose. And this thing is just as transparent and just as punchy and, you know, really at minus six, you know, with as much information as I have going on and the amount of low end and things, we should be hearing the mix start to pinch a little bit, maybe losing just a little bit of space and depth. And, I, and I'm not hearing that with this plugin, which is amazing. It's incredibly transparent. This limiter just sounds fantastic. I mean, I, I, I will likely use this limiter on my mixes, maybe with nothing on it, maybe not even use one of my presets, just, you know, put the limiter ceiling to, you know, minus 0.1 so I don't have any digital clips and then just pull a threshold down until I'm at a level where I feel like is exciting for the band and send it off. I mean, it doesn't really get much simpler than that. And that's not something that we've always had. I mean, it's definitely a luxury um, in the past few years to have limiters this transparent and this thing is is hitting it. But just for the heck of it, you know, we'll, we'll switch to... Um, a little bit more complex 
mastering. Now see that? I I do feel there that we've taken the 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 mix. We were up into minus five there, even into minus four. For me, to turn that limiter on and to have that sort of volume immediately is incredible. I do feel like we were melting down a little bit, so I would I would just take and back it off, which is something you need to 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 be aware of. Like, don't be afraid to tweak this stuff to your to your liking. Um, let's take it down about a dB. I mean, we're sitting at minus six and a half there, still screaming loud, but still doesn't feel like it's squashed to death. Um, I can show you with and without it, the volume change is going to be very drastic. That added some volume, some punch, and some air up, uh, some punch in the bottom, and some air up top. That you know, I would have taken a couple different plugins to do, and I mean, it, it really matched it well. Matched hardware, matched software, and just really incredible sounding. And it's all in one plugin. I mean, to me, it's just that's incredible. Really, really impressive in terms of what they've achieved with the guts of this thing, um, how it sounds, whether it's modeling me or not.